At a certain temperature, the reaction of CO2 and hydrogen give you carbon monoxide and water has a Kc of 2.51. If two and a half moles of carbon monoxide and two and a half moles of water are placed in a five liter vessel, um, what will the concentration of the carbon monoxide be in equilibrium? All right, so we're going to start by setting up an ice table. And our initial concentrations, 2.5 divided by 5 is 0.5, and that's per carbon monoxide and water. So we're assuming that the hydrogen and CO2 are none. Therefore, these must go up when we reach equilibrium, and these must go down. So at equilibrium, we have x and x and 0.5 minus x and 0.5 minus x. So Kc for this equation would have our carbon monoxide and water products on top, and the CO2 and the hydrogen on the bottom. So plugging things in, we have 2.51 equals 0.5 minus x and 0.5 minus x all over x and x. Now, um, we can simplify that, but if you have a graphing calculator, we can just plug this right in. Okay, so let's clear that out. So we have 0.5 minus x squared times x raised to the negative 2 minus 2.51 and graph that cross in 0 so I'm going to calculate where it crosses zero. And we know it's going to be somewhere between zero. And the highest it could be from that is 0.5. And then I'll back this down, zero. And it came up with a x or a zero of 0.193. All right, but it wants to know what the carbon monoxide concentration is. So carbon monoxide, which is 0.5 minus x, would be 0.5 minus 0 0.193, 0 0.3 something. So 0.5 minus 0.193 would get an answer of 0.307. Now, if you don't have a graphing calculator, we can simplify the heck out of this right here because this and these are the same thing. So the square root of 2.51 is actually equal to just 0.5 minus x over x. We're going to move that over here. So it's going to be 0.5 minus x equals the square root of 2.51x. Now I have to do a little bit of math, so what is the square root of 2.51? That is 1.58. I'll go ahead and do 1.584. And uh, we're going to combine like terms, so I'm going to move this x over here, so we have 0.5 equals 2.58 for x, because that was 1x. So my answer, I'll just add 1 to this, and I'm going to do 0 0.5 divided by that, and I get the same x we had before of 0.193. And we'd still do the same thing, subtract that from the 0.5 to get that same 0 0.307.